Hi everyone, I am here with the first part of the 5x7 envelope mini album. This one here that we're going to be making. Um, I'm, this video is to show you how to cut the chipboard and do the covers. I'm not going to decorate the front because I usually don't do that until the end. So, whoops, I'm going to show you how to just do wrapping the cover and then matting and putting your pattern paper on the front. So, I have a 12 by 12 sheet of chipboard and I will put a link in the description for you if you want to know where I got it. Um, I'm going to use this craft cardstock throughout my album, so that's why I have this. This is just recollections. And then I'm also going to be using um, some copy paper, just white printer paper, because I do have some white accents in the little collection that I'm using. Um, and I'm going to use that to wrap my chipboard because it's a thinner paper. So, cutting the chipboard. We, I'm using a Fiskars rotary trimmer. It's kind of a heavy duty rotary trimmer. Um, and that's what I use to cut all of my chipboard. So we're going to cut two pieces. We're going to start at seven and three quarters. That piece is a little off, so I'm going to turn it. There we go. And just cut right through it. That didn't cut the first time, so move it back over. There we go. And now we're going to cut twice at five and five eighths. So there's one. And there's two. So there we have our chipboard pieces. And next I'm going to cut my copy paper that I need to wrap my chipboard with. And this is going to be eight and three quarters. I'm going to cut both pieces at one time. And I'm using my ruler as a guide because I don't have a little pull-out arm to extend my ruler on this cutter. So we've got eight and three quarters. So it's going to be an inch bigger in both directions of your chipboard pieces. So eight and three quarters by six and five eighths is going to give us our little pieces to wrap the chipboard with. And then we're going to cut some mats to go on the front. So I'm going to use this craft cardstock here. And this is going to be seven and five eighths. So we can go ahead and cut it this way first. By five and a half. So we'll just cut this in half. And that's going to give us both of our matted pieces. And then we're going to cut our designer paper or printed paper that you're going to use for your cover. This is going to be cut at seven and a half. So your length, whoops, by five and three eighths. And we're going to do that twice. So one for the front and one for the back. So there we have those pieces. Now we're going to go ahead and just assemble this and get this cover put together. So what I do, here are my printer pieces, is take my chipboard. I didn't pull any of this stuff out. So hang on a second get my glue stick and my ATG tape. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go over all of the edges with my 
ATG tape. You can use score tape or red liner tape or whatever it is that you have for this. Um, my ATG tape has just worked fine for it. So I'm just going to use it. I'm going to put a couple strips down the middle. Then I'm going to take this giant glue stick and I'm just going to kind of fill in where the ATG tape is not because I don't want to cover the entire front with ATG tape. So this will help in between all this sticking. Okay, so I'm going to take my copy paper and I'm just going to center this piece as best as I can and just press that down and I'm going to take my brayer and just make sure that this is all doesn't have any bubbles in it like that all the bubbles taken care of only going to see a little bit of this white paper anyway because I'm going to be matting over the top of it. So there's one. I'll do the second one. just to make sure that the entire thing is stuck down. So that's why I use the ATG and the glue stick. Okay, so again, we're gonna take copy paper and just center this. that down. I'll use the brayer on the other side again. And if you don't have a brayer, you don't have to run out and buy one. Just use your um, your bone folder. That's what I used to use till I got one. And I just went over the whole thing with it. But see these bubbles right here? I don't really want those bubbles in there. Just go this way. And I press really, really hard just Kind of until you, whoops, you can't hear the tape anymore. Okay, so that's it for that. Cover this glue stick up. So the next piece, or the next step, is I'm going to just crease all of my edges. So that is going to give me a guide on the corners that I need to trim off. So just like that, we're going to take scissors and we're just going to trim a little bit off the corner. And you don't want to get too close to your chipboard because it's going to leave it bare. So you kind of want like an eighth of an inch or so, that way it covers pretty nice and you can't see it poking through. I'll we'll go ahead and do this one. I think that one was a little close for me, but we'll see. we have that. Now we're going to go ahead and use some score tape for this. I use this scrappy tape that I get and 
this, I'm going to go over all of my edges. And I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom of the chipboard. sides here. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and do this one too while we're at it. So we're going to do this both pieces. our score tape. So this part I am going to go over with my bone folder and just make sure that this is going to stick to my chipboard. So when I pull it up I won't have any problems pulling that liner off. Make sure that this tape is adhered pretty well. So I'm just going to use my paper piercer to kind of lift the corner here so I can get underneath. Oops. Just like that. I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys, but I don't want this video to be forever long. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is fold this paper back on itself again, and then just kind of let that adhere nice and smooth. So we'll do this side too, kind of gets it started for wrapping. And then I'm going to take my corners, and I'm going to go in with my corners so they're not sticking out. There we go. So I just take the bone folder and crease in the corner. And smooth that down. And then there we have part of the wrapped cover. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one. Then we can do our matting and you could decorate it now, you could decorate it when the album is finished, which is what I tend to do. Um, I'll pick out stuff at the beginning, maybe, that I'm kind of eyeballing from the kit or the collection that I'm using, and kind of keep that in mind. But I always wait until I've got everything done before I decorate the front. So there we go, we're just wrapping that edge. And this edge. These ones are not very even, but that's okay because we're going to put a mat on the inside too. Which we did not cut yet, so we'll do that. Okay, so we're going to tuck this side in. I think that one's a little short. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, that worked out fine. I'm going to tuck these edges in. Little corners. So there we go. We have both of our covers with our basic layer on them. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and stick our... I'm using this craft color, so I'm going to stick this mat down first. And for this, I do use score tape because it is my cover and I don't want the cover coming off. And so for this one, I'm actually going to um, try to get it as close to the edge as I can. And then I'm going to use my scissors to cut the tape. 
tape so that way I know it's covered all the way to the edge there. So we're going to do this for both sides. Not both sides, all four sides. <laughs> On both pieces. I think that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> okay, so there's our first one. Now we're going to do the second one. So if you guys have already done this part, you're faster than me, you can speed this part up to get to the next part of the video. But the next part of this is going to actually be kind of the same thing, just another layer on top. So if you don't want a matted layer, you can skip it and go straight to whatever paper you want on the front of your album and that would work too. I just like the look of the matting. So that's why I do it. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to go over this with my bone folder, make sure it's all stuck down. Go ahead and take these pieces off. I think I'm going to have to go inside of this one just because it's so close to the edge. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so get this going. And before I stick this to my cover, I'm going to add some APG tape in the center. I'm going to put a couple of strips ATG tape. So, just going to center this right on the front of the cover. And you can go over this with your bone folder or if you've got a brayer. Make sure it's flattened down, just like that. We can zoom in a little bit for you guys. So let's get this next piece on. Like I said, we're basically going to do the same thing for the top layer. Okay, so we'll just center this one again. Okay, so there we have those two parts. Now we're going to take our top pieces, our patterned paper, and do the same thing. So this part is kind of boring. <laughs> but I, I had some requests for not to pre-prep everything because um, there's some new people out there who want to see the whole process and may not know how to do a wrapped chipboard cover. Um, this is just how I do mine. I can't say it's the right way or the wrong way. It's just the way I like doing it. 
you can skip all of this and just take your patterned paper and use that as wrapping the entire cover also if you don't want to do any matting. But when I'm using a collection or a kit, um, I don't normally have duplicate papers. So I had to come up with a way to find out how to use one sheet for the front and the back. And this was the easiest thing I could come up with, was just doing some matting. And I think it turns out fine. I like the way it looks better than just taking the paper and wrapping the chipboard. Because I've done that before too. And a lot of my paper bag mini albums and stuff um, have just a wrapped uh, patterned paper cover. Um, but since I started doing this recently, I really like it. So it's all choice, personal preference, whatever you want to do. Like I said, this is just how I do it. Okay, so we're going to go over that again with the bone folder. Make sure that the tape sticks to the paper where it needs to. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other, the other piece. I'm going to add some... ATG tape to the center. Don't want it to stick. Okay. So this one I'm going to put like three little strips just because it is the top part of my cover. And I want it to go this way. This looks like, it's kind of like a sweater print. I'm trying to stay in frame here for you guys. <laughs> so, let's see if I can get this centered pretty good. Okay, so there is my top cover piece. So that's what one side of the cover looks like. And we still have to do the inside, which I'm just going to cut some more craft cardstock for the inside of it too. Um, I didn't want the inside covers to be too fancy because the, the first envelope is going to cover one, and then the last envelope is going to cover the back. But I wanted to put something on there because it almost doesn't, it doesn't cover as much as I wanted it to. Unless I made my cover a little bit smaller, which I guess I could have done, but this is just the size that I've been doing. So um, I'll bring the other one back out in a second and show you guys kind of what I'm talking about. Okay, and since I picked a pattern that is pretty much the same on both pieces, um, it doesn't really matter which one I do for the front or the back. I have done some where they've had, like there's been a corner that had some decoration on it and I've used where you could see the corner on the front cover and then the back was plain. Um, so it just depends on whatever you pick as your, um, your cover pattern. So I'm going to cut, I'm just going to bring out my little trimmer the inside mat for the covers 
And that is actually going to be 7 and 5 eighths. And this has a pull out. There we go. Just move these out of the way. Okay, so 7 and 5 eighths. By five and a half. So just cut this in half. Get all this stuff out of my way. So there we have our two inside cover pieces. by wanting to put something on the inside just because the envelope doesn't go all the way to the edge. So in this one I just used black. So that's what I'm talking about there. So this is just going to go right inside the front cover. And again, another boring part. Super sorry. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the score tape all the way around because you do not want these pieces coming off. So, um, you guys could forward through this part if you'd like. Because it's basically the same thing as what we did with the other pieces. So it's not that crucial. since we've already done it before. Oops. And we gotta do it twice again. So this is one of the not so fun parts of the mini album. They're kind of consuming, time consuming. They can be. And as we get farther, um, when we start doing the pages, which will be next, um, I'm not going to be decorating any of my pages. I have a really hard time doing that. I can make mini albums all day long, but then having to embellish any of the pages is really hard for me. So that's another one of the reasons I go for the kits. Because everything that comes inside of it coordinates. I don't have to try to find something that matches or that will look okay. It just automatically does. So that's the bonus of using the kits or the collections. So a little bone folder action here. Just to make sure that that's all stuck down. And then again on the inside I'm going to run a couple strips of ATG tape just for a little more security. Sticking to my arm there. That went out of my way so I don't get stuck to it. Okay. Just going to run two. just going to line this up and then press that down. Flip it over. Okay, so there we have one complete cover piece. And we're doing the next one. So you technically don't even have to do your cover piece until the end if you don't want to, but I like to pick out that piece of paper first so I don't use it inside the album somewhere and then kick myself later for using my cover piece. 
So I usually try to just get the cover done and set it aside during the rest of the making. And then I'm good. So there we go. Okay, so there we have the insides of our covers and the outsides of our covers. That one is upside down. <laughs> so when you're actually putting these on, make sure that your, your covers actually are going the same direction. If you have a directional pattern, I guess if you, if you don't, then it's not a big deal. So that is how you do the cover for the 5x7 mini album. If you guys have any questions about anything that you saw or are not understanding, just let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next step. Bye!